for granted that what we are seeing on social media is just a snapshot. Yeah, or it's a lie. Well, I, it could be a snapshot. It, it could be right? a lie. It's a snapshot of one moment. So yes. it wouldn't be fair to judge a whole relationship based on one snapshot. Mm, mm. We're not judging the entire relationship based on one snapshot. We're just saying that there's a lot of unnecessary pressure that we place on ourselves because of what we see on social media. Like, oh, but you know, we should be like so and so. And like, for example, if I'm in a relationship with you, Andrew, and we don't exactly do the social media thing, but you see all these things on social media and you start pressuring me to, you know, we need to pose for photos and stuff like that because you want to get a thousand likes or you want to get the best filters and whatnot, but you don't pay the same kind of attention to your Instagram status and WhatsApp status as you do me, which is what is important. Yeah, that's just what I'm trying to say. Because if we paid even half of the attention that we pay to our social media following and stories as we do to our relationships, I think I really believe that we'd be that much more happier because you'd be living less of a lie. Okay, I like I like what you've said, and I'd like even just to take it uh, into a deeper dimension. That I wouldn't say uh, people are partnering their, or other people are trying to create their relationships from what they see from Instagram. But I think we're not we're taking for granted mm -hmm. the power of the society around us and how it frames how we should be relating in relationships. Like for example, if like you gave the example, if I'm in a relation, relationship with you, mm -hmm. and let's say we are students on campus, mm -hmm. and maybe we don't come from well-off uh, yeah, parents, backgrounds, yeah. backgrounds, and some of our classmates are taking their girlfriends to Java, and you see them laughing and saying, oh my God, my boyfriend took us to Java, we ate. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, I, I don't know, just giving that for example. Yeah, uh, I okay. might be mistaken. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes. It was an example. So you see, there might be pressure on mm -hmm. the guy that, oh my God, my girl might not feel okay, I'm not doing my part as a guy if I can't take her to Java mm -hmm. and her friends are all. And you all might. About that life, yes. And, yes, and you might even give him pressure. You might start telling him, you don't even take me to Java and, you know, all my friends, their boyfriends are taking them to Java, blah, blah, blah. That sounds very really childish, like something a child would say to a parent. But yes, I do get you at the point because there are some pressures that we put on ourselves and some pressures we, we put on, on our, our better halves. But, you know, I feel like also that comes down to how you communicate with your partner and if you're with the right partner because you could be with the wrong partner but you're communicating just fine yeah so if a man is with a woman because I mean his intention is just to bang her and bounce out of her life he's probably going to do whatever it takes to just do exactly that but if she's interested in a long term relationship or something more solid something more tangible or long term whatever word you want to put in there then the two are not supposed to be together in the first place but why did they get together maybe because of convenience maybe there's an initial attraction or a spark that brought them together in the first place but that's also why you need to have the important conversations in the beginning to avoid hurt which is what a lot of people don't do which is why a lot of people get hurt yeah you hear stories about people getting ghosted you hear stories about people cheating on each other people getting together because of money people breaking up because oh you know we kind of just stop talking to each other why how should that even happen or or you know sometimes it's um, factors outside the couple's control like family or friends or peer pressure and uh, sometimes it's work unfortunately you know you could be seconded off to a different country and and the other person may not be able to come because you know you're not a spouse or something like that the relationship is new and you figure well yeah or you're just together because of the simple reason you're afraid of being alone i know people who for as long as i've known them what five five years months days weeks they have never been single for more than what a month 
they're always jumping in and out of relationships for the simple fact that they're terrified of being alone. They would rather be even with an abuser than be by themselves, which is really sad because it says something about not being able to love yourself enough to want to spend time with you. Yeah, we always have external distractions. You're always listening to music or a podcast or reading. You're always doing something to not spend time with yourself and listen to yourself and talk to yourself, which I think is healthy. Yeah, people say talking to yourself is crazy. I talk to myself a lot. That makes me crazy. Well, normal is boring. 